Okay boss, I will hit my KPIs. This story came from 5 years ago when I worked for a small ITMSP company. We had 4 full-time techs. With the newest tech having about 5 years of experience and me being the most seasoned tech with nearly 15 years of experience. Between the four of us we managed about a thousand PCs and about 20 servers spread out over about 30 clients. None of us were assigned to a specific client. We would all take turns grabbing whatever tickets came in. All of our work was lump sum or contract work. So we never had to worry about how long a problem took to fix or how much it would cost the client. We had an account manager who handled all the billing and things with the clients. It was a dream job for a tech. We got to show up and do our jobs and not have to deal with sales or billing any other client drama. I not only had the most experience but was also the most self-motivated. I would often come in early and get started on the tickets that came in after hours. And I would assist the other techs if they came across a complex problem. Everyone, including the owner, referred to me as the senior tech, even though that wasn't my title. After two years working there, I decided to talk to the owner about a raise. I brought all kinds of information to our meeting showing that I closed the most tickets and received the most positive feedback from a survey we sent our clients. He agreed to give me a raise, but said he wanted to think about how much to give me and that he would get back to me. A few weeks later, he called a company meeting and announced that he had decided to change some things and that he would no longer be giving anyone raises. Instead, he would set up KPIs key performance indicators, and the entire tech team would receive weekly bonuses based on hitting those numbers. I didn't like this at all, as it meant my pay was dependent on the performance of everyone on the team and not just me. I found out later one of the other techs had also asked for a raise. So this was the owner's solution to pay us less. The KPIs were simple enough. If a ticket came in, we had to acknowledge it within 15 minutes to achieve a score of 100. If we missed the 15-minute window, the score for that ticket was zero. There were a total of 10 things we had to hit, including how long the ticket was open before we marked it as complete. If the total score for the week was above 90 we each received a $100 bonus. I saw major problems with this bonus system and I shared my concerns with the owner. He got very annoyed with me and said, just hit the KPIs. Quote. Cue the malicious compliance. We all figured out pretty quickly how to game the KPI system. We could acknowledge a ticket in the system but it didn't check if we had actually called the client. We would just email and mark the ticket as, reached out to the client. A big issue is that. Sometimes a client would put in a low-priority ticket and ask that we schedule it for some time the following week, but that would make us miss our KPI, so we would start hounding the client to schedule it sooner, and if they were not available, we would simply close the ticket. We quickly learned to hit our KPIs and start getting a bonus every week. However, it caused our customer service to drop which is exactly what I had warned the owner of. During the previous two years, we had never had a complaint about our service, but now there were multiple complaints every week. This whole process added a ton of stress to us. As we all started to fight when someone missed a KPI and we all started to work late on Fridays to try and get in those last few numbers. After two months the owner finally realized he had made a mistake. He removed the bonus system, without giving us a raise, and asked us to go back to how things were. At this point, I was so stressed I had already started looking for another job. And we had lost two clients. I was the first to put in my two weeks notice. But before I left the other three techs had all put in notice as well. The last I heard the company had lost over half its clients and the owner had to bring in several new techs, paying them over 20% more than I had asked for my raise. T. 
TL. D or instead of giving a raise. The boss gave us a bonus for hitting KPIs. Even though that caused our customer service to drop. Nearly costing him his businesses. If only more bosses would take a hot minute to check how much it would cost them to hire a new employee of equivalent experience before denying the raise that was requested, they'd probably realize that 9 times out 10, the raise is much cheaper. It's just astounding that people just don't understand that paying people is how work gets done. He succeeded in creating a single KPI. Get our bonus no matter what. KPIs can be very useful but beware. What you measure is what you deem that matters. So be very sure that what you are measuring is actually what you want. How to mangle your business 101. Nickel pinchers can be their own worst enemy. Absolutely love KPIs. I worked at a couple of jobs with performance parameters that we always seemed to be able to MacGyver around. I never had to quit because it was a bigger company and so the reality was hidden from my management. All they cared about were numbers. Nice work. Edit found my story. HTTPS www.reddit.com slash r slash malicious compliance slash comments slash pin zero slash how a became it starstalker slash utm source equals share in utm medium equals android app and utm name equals android css and utm term equals one and utm content equals share button we quickly learn to hit our KPIs and start getting a bonus every week. However, it caused our customer service to drop. Sounds familiar. I am convinced that metrics are used so that people don't have to manage their personnel. Otherwise, they have to actually know what is going on and that requires they monitor production daily. This is exactly how tech support at my company works. It's all KPI driven. So 60% of my tickets get closed immediately with instructions to resubmit the ticket with additional info, or after they have time to research the issue, etc. Instead of moving the ticket to investigating status or waiting for more info from requester, it's all about the open closed time. As a small business, sales agency, owner, I don't understand why some don't want to pay their people fairly. Our outside team is paid a base plus commission every month. I tell them I want to write them the biggest commission check I can each month. If I'm doing this we are all making money. Sounds like our, our IT support. They gamed the system by ringing US after hours and if no one answered they would simply mark the ticket is closed which of course meant we had to raise another ticket rinse and repeat without actually getting our problem solved we learned to foil their game by staying late if we raised a ticket which because it was after hours usually meant they couldn't fix the ticket causing missed targets damn they hated us but it wasn't us gaming the system all we wanted was the problem fixed I'm not in tech. I'm a senior commercial, legal contracts manager. That means I negotiate contract provisions. In considerable detail. With our most demanding customers, prospects. I've been subjected to this same nonsense. Someone got the bright idea of applying KPIs to my workload. They thought it would be meaningful and helpful to measure stuff like Time request received to time of response time request received to time of final resolution etc. Totally ignoring that many of the requests I handle are unprecedented. Requiring research and consultation with corporate management and senior legal counsel. In this work, there is no normal. Finding solutions often requires creative language and concepts that we've never used or seen. After a year of measuring, I was asked to compile a report of my performance against KPIs. As I'd predicted from day one, 
The outliers outnumbered the normal results. Times measured for the same task as defined by the MBA types ranged from a day or two to six months to as long as five years. The results were mathematically meaningless. Standard deviations were almost larger than the sample set. Lol. When asked to explain, I answered. Ask the customers, prospects. They're the ones requesting weird stuff we literally cannot do or things that management won't agree to do, usually for good reasons. When we can agree, it requires creativity, executive level approvals and lengthy negotiations. As I said from the start, you're trying to measure profoundly non-comparable events with one simple yardstick. It's nonsense. It will always be nonsense. BTW. I closed seven contracts last year with customers we've never reached agreements with before. Despite 20 years of trying. Where's the KPI for that? Quote. When a good measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. Yup. This is the same experience I've had when KPIs went from a metric being tracked to the focus of the business and basis for paying bonuses. We went from KPIs that were good to middling with great customer feedback and retention, to great KPIs and declining satisfaction in feedback and retention. The company went on a tear using telemetrics for anything they could, basing the KPIs on productive time and duration. A clear focus on getting more done in less time. Only this meant not having prep time. Time to rest or take breaks between services. Time to fully address customer issues. And time to just generally be a friendly face of the company to the customer. This resulted in regular equipment issues. More frequent injuries. More frequent reservices and customer complaints around a lack of interaction with service providers and phone reps. At the same time, bonuses went from being based on customer feedback and retention, to satisfying KPI goals. Management pushed satisfying KPIs over all else, because they'd get an earful from the higher-ups on conference calls if they didn't. Customers weren't happy and would lay into service providers for doing their job in the prescribed manner. Employees weren't happy, taking abuse from customers, and having their workload increased both by goals being set higher when they satisfied KPIs, and understaffing due to employment they're becoming a revolving door from burnout. As of now, it hasn't improved, if anything, rather than listening to customer and employee feedback, or even acknowledging the correlating drop in customer count. They've doubled down on it. At the very least they have realized that with the amount of competition in the industry they need to offer competitive wages to not absolutely hemorrhage employees. So there have been raises. If you think retaining skilled employees is expensive, try replacing them. Lesson I've learned from being in management for the last decade plus. If you give employees a bonus incentive for something, they'll find a way to game the system just to earn the bonus. Solution. Pay your good people what they're worth to begin with and take care of them when they ask for it. As long as they deserve it. We had a system here once where sales got paid an extra $25 per customer for upselling 1.0 units of product in addition to whatever the customer came in to purchase. A default customer ticket was valued at 0.8 units. No upsells. At the time we offered an item that counted as 0.5 units, and only cost the customer $10. It did not take long for the sales team to figure out that if they simply paid the $10 themselves out of pocket, the ticket would close out at 1.3 units, triggering the $25 bonus a profit of $15 per customer paid to the sales rep. The average sales representative was processing about 20 customers per day. A little napkin math will tell you that's an extra $300 a day just from paying for the customers. $10 add-on. Before long, 
That 0.5 unit upsell item was showing up on every single job. Whether the customer had asked for it or not, the sales staff was just telling the customers that it was a free upgrade. Another tactic they discovered was that if they just added items to the customer's sale anyway, they could just gaslight the customers into thinking they had agreed to it originally. And if the customer, rightfully, objected, the salesman would just discount the upsells but since the item was technically sold, they still got paid their upsell bonus, even if the customer never paid a single cent for any of it. Before long, a few sales reps who had been making $500 $800 per week were getting commission checks for $2,000 $2,500 per week. I used to do the payroll every week and brought this to the store manager's attention on multiple occasions and was basically told, unless you actually witness it happening, you can't call them out for it. About two months after that, a new director started, who was in charge of our department for all seven of our stores. The store manager's boss. He noticed the massive jump in commission pay over the last 23 months and went and talked to the CEO and CFO. The next week, the pay plan was changed to a much more fair commission plan based on total dollar sales, not total unit sales, with all objective bonuses removed entirely. Why would he give his good employees raises when he can screw you, his customers, and his business over for twice the cost? My employees made this same mistake. From 315 highly specialized troubleshooter, we are now 107. Management had an emergency meeting on what targets to drop. They don't find replacement because they ate either rookies with nobody to train them or veteran, demanding double the pay they offer. Stupid people think short term, and it always bites them in the ass because they trade short term gain for long term loss. He got a short period of time to be free of salary complaints by his employees. Only for it to turn around and bite him in the ass by losing his employees and a bunch of customers. A little further down the road. You'd think with all of the stories just on this sub alone of idiotic management making this. Insanely idiotic mistake. There would be some sort of effort by companies to say, this really isn't a good idea and we should avoid it at all costs. Quote dot. I guess greed just overrides common sense every time. Short-sighted greed. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.